In the last video, we looked at the history of an atom and then eventually into J.J. Thompson's experiments with the cathode ray tubes that showed the charge to mass ratio between electrons. Now, that was great, but we still did not know what was the mass of an electron or what was the charge. We only knew the ratio, and from that we had the raisin bun model. But then along came a scientist named Robert Andrews Milken, who came up with this Milken oil drop experiment. So what was that? This experiment is what really decided, and it helped determine Planck's constant, but mainly decided the charge of an electron and helped figure out what its mass was. If we knew the charge, we could find the mass, and if we knew the mass, we could find the charge. In 1910, Robert Milken of the University of Chicago published the details of an experiment that proved beyond a doubt that the charge was carried by discrete positive and negative entities of which had an equal magnitude. He was also able to measure the unitary charge, which we now recognize as to be the electron. This experiment is considered to be one of the most significant ever carried out, and Millikan received a Nobel Prize for this. Here's the interesting thing though, out of his experiments, he actually discredited a whole bunch. He didn't actually publish all of his uh, findings or his tests, he only published a certain amount which some people say is scientific fraud, why he ignored some of his lab results. But maybe there was something else to it that he did. He had intuition or something. Maybe there's something else. He made mistakes in those labs, but we do not know. But let's go back here. So what is his oil drop experiment? Basically, he has an atomizer here that shoots out little oil droplets. And then they got friction, and through friction, they were able to get a slight charge. He also then would shoot little x-rays at them to change their charges. Now, what would happen is these small little droplets, would then one or two of them, would eventually fall through this little hole. And he has a battery here with a potential difference, which would make an electric field. Now, if these are charged, then he could figure out, and he could change the charges, then he could figure out at what uh, voltage it would need to suspend them in the air. Now, he was also able to figure out the mass of each droplet because if he could measure the diameter of each of these droplets, then he knew, since it's spherical, what the whole volume would be. And we knew the mass of oil, so then he was able to figure out the mass of the droplet. So let's put this all together here. So basically, we have air atomizing, blowing through, and it's atomizing the oil. So it's little tiny small particles. And these drop in. Now there's a little pinhole here which allows some of the oil drops to follow through. Okay, And we have a telescope here to watch and we have volts. So you could increase, decrease the voltage to see when it stays. And we have the distance here to figure out what is going to be our uh, electric field strength. Now he also had an x-ray tube here to shoot x-rays at this oil to give him a better charge. So the atomizer produced a fine spray of oil droplets with a radius of about 1 micrometers. Many of the droplets were charged. Occasionally the droplet fell through the pinhole. If the droplet was charged it could be brought to a halt held stationary by applying voltage. When the droplet was stationary, the force exerted by the electrostatic field, which is your electric field multiplied by the charge of the electron, was equal to the weight of the droplet, which is the mass, and gravity acceleration. So then we just say my gravitational force must be equal to my electric force. And from there, we could rearrange these to find the charge of an electron. Now, how did he do this? He did this over and over and over, and he found the charges always went up by 1.6 times 10 to 19 coulombs in amount. So they went up by quantities, like little quantities. And they're always consistent quantities of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, which is interesting. So then if there are always multiples of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, he started coming up with the idea that an electron has a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And then with this, you could end up finding out what is the mass of an electron as well. Here in our first example, we have an oil drop experiment. In an oil drop experiment, a droplet contained a charge of 
3.6 times 10 to the negative 15 coulombs. If the electric field between the plates is 6.2 times 10 to the negative 17 newtons per coulomb, what is the mass of the oil droplet? So let's first look at what we're given. We know my charge is equal to 3.6 times 10 to the negative 15 coulombs. We know my electric field is equal to 6.2 times 10 to the negative 17 newtons per coulomb. Now we also know, so right here it's being suspended, okay, because it's being contained, so it's being suspended. We must look at it that my force of gravity must equal to my electric force. So I know my electric force is equal to my force of gravity. And we want to find the mass. So we're going to look at this. I'm going to have my charge multiplied by my electric field is equal to my mass times gravity. And here we're going to isolate for mass. So mass is equal to my charge multiplied by my electric field divided by my gravity. This is going to end up giving me, we're going to plug in now, I have my charge 3.6 times 10 to the negative 16 coulombs, and we want to multiply that by my electric field, which is 6.2 times 10 to the negative 17 newtons per coulomb. And then we divide that by gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. When I calculate this, I'm going to end up getting a total of 2.3 times 10 to the negative 32 kilograms. Let's take a look at our second example. An oil drop of a mass of 9.8 times 10 to the negative 16 kilograms is suspended between two horizontal plates. If the electric field strength is 2.0 times 10 to the 4 volts per meter, what is the magnitude of the charge on the oil drop? We're going to look at our given. We have our mass is equal to 9.8 times 10 to the negative 16 kilograms. Now, right here it says my charge of the magnetic field is equal to 2.0 times 10 to the 4 volts per meter. This might confuse you that volts per meter, but if we look at this, electric field is equal to my change in volts, so my potential difference, divided by my change in distance. But it's also equal to my force, my electric field force, divided by my charge. So the units, volts per meter, is really the same as newtons per coulomb. So that's going to work there. And we want to know what is the magnitude of the charge. So my charge is my unknown that we're trying to figure out. All right, so once again, we know my force of the electric field must equal to the force of my magnetic field because it's balanced. So we're going to have my charge multiplied by my electric is equal to my mass multiplied by my gravity. Now we're trying to solve for my charge, so my charge is going to be equal to mass multiplied by gravity divided by my electric field. We're going to now substitute in all of our values, and I'm going to get my mass is 9.8 times 10 to the negative 16. And we're going to multiply that by 9.81 times, uh, or meters per second squared and divide this all by 2 times 10 to the 4 volts per meter. And what we end up getting for this is 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Now here's my next question for you. After I get this answer for my charge, how many electrons is that? Okay. So here are some questions for you guys to do by yourself. I want you to pause the video, try to do these questions. These are the answers to the question. In example three, we have a tiny plastic sphere with a mass of 8.2 times 10 to the negative 15 kilograms, which is placed in an electric field with a strength of 1.0 times 10 to the five newtons per coulomb going down in a vacuum chamber. So we have to remember then, the positive is on top and the negative is on the bottom.
because it goes because our field lines go from positive to a negative. The sphere has 10 excess electrons. Determine whether the sphere will accelerate, and if so, in which direction. So in this case, will my electric field force be greater, or will my gravitational force be greater? So let's look at what's given here. We know we're going to choose up to be positive, so then we know that my electric field is 1.0 times 10 to the 5 down. We know my mass is 8.2 times 10 to the negative 15 kilograms. And my charge is going to be 10 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And we also know my gravity. So let's look at force 1. So my first force is my gravity force, and we can figure out the force of gravity. And we know that these are going to be working against each other, my force of gravity and my electric force. Let's look at force 2. Force 2 is my electric force. So here I have my two forces, and we're going to have to subtract these forces. Now that I know these different forces, I know my force going up, and then I could use my F is equal to MA to figure out what is my acceleration. So we're just going to rearrange for my acceleration, get force net divided by mass. And we plug in our numbers, and we're going to end up getting it's going to accelerate at 9.7 times, or 9.7 meters per second squared upward. So my electron here, or not my electron, but my drop will go, or my plastic sphere will go upward instead of downward. Here are some questions for you guys to try now by yourself after doing that question. Our second last question, we have a Millikan oil drop experiment. A student sprays oil droplets with a density of 7.8 times 10 to 2 kilograms per meters cubed between two horizontal plates that are separated by 4 centimeters. The students adjust the potential difference on the plate to read 4.6 times 10 to the 3 volts so that the drops become stationary. The diameter of the drops is measured to be 2.4 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. What is the charge of the droplet? Now for this here, we're going to have to look back to equations we learned in grade 8, 9, and even some in grade 7. We're going to have to look at volume and density and figure out to go from there. Let's look at what's given. We have density is equal to 7.8 times 10 to the 2 kilograms meters oops, per meter cubed. We also know my distance, my change in distance, the distance between the plates, is equal to 0 0.04 meters. Remember, we have to convert the centimeters to meters. We know my volts is equal to 4.6 times 10 to the 3 volts. So that's my potential difference. We also know my radius is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the negative 6 meters because it's half my diameter. Now we're trying to find what is the charge. Well let's look at this here. To start this off we have to figure out my mass. So how do I find my mass? Well my mass, if we look at these units here, if I times my density by my volume because it's meters cubed, I'm going to be able to figure out what my mass is. So I'm going to look at my density, and I'm going to go 7.8 times 10 to the 2, and we're going to have kilograms per meters cubed. And I want to multiply this by the volume of a sphere, which is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So let's do my substitution. I'm going to have 7.8 times 10 to the 2 kilograms meters per meter cubed, and we're going to multiply this by 4 over 3, multiply by pi, multiply by my radius, which is 1.2. And what I end up getting for my mass is 5.65 times 10 to the negative 15 kilograms. Alright, so now that we know my mass, we can now start figuring out what is everything equal to? So I know my force of electric field is equal to my force of gravity. We know here, I'm going to change this here because we also know my electric field 
is equal to my change in volts divided by my change in distance. So I'm going to plug that in for my E in my electric force is equal to charge times E. I'm going to plug this in for that E. So I'm going to end up getting my charge of the whatever the particle is multiplied by my change in volts or my potential difference divided by my difference in the distances of the plates. And then we're going to, this is equal to mass times gravity. Now we're trying to solve for Q, so I'm going to get my charge is equal to mass times gravity multiplied by my change in distance divided by my potential difference. I continue this and do my substitution and everything. I'm going to end up getting 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs for an answer. Our last example for the day is an old diploma style question involving the Millikan experiment. So here we have a charged particle that has a mass of 2.8 times 10 to the negative 16 kilograms accelerating upward at 3.6 times uh, 3.6 meters per second squared in an electric field between two horizontal plates that have a separation of 0.1 meters. The potential difference in the plates is 400 volts. The experiment is performed on Earth's surface at sea level. So here it wants first is draw the electric field lines between the plates. So if we remember, electric fields go from positive to a negative. So I'm going to draw these lines going from positive to a negative. And these here are going to be my electric field lines. Next part it wants us to is calculate the magnitude and direction of the force of the particle. So right here we want force is equal to mass times acceleration. We know the magnitude and direction because it tells us that it's accelerating upward. We know the mass of the particle, so then we're able to figure out that it is going upward. So that's the force going upward of this particle, the net force. So the electric force must be greater than my gravitational force. Now let's look at my next question. It says, determine the charge on the particle. So here again, we know that my electric force is equal to my applied force plus my gravitational force. Now we know what the gravitational force is because we know the mass, and we know the electric and we know the applied force altogether, or our net force, due to what's happened. So if we add these together and we go mass, some phi by factoring out the mass, we just go gravity plus the acceleration, we're going to end up getting my charge. Or then we solve for my charge. We're going to end up getting my charge here, and that's going to be 9.4 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Now for D, it asks, determine the time required for the particle to move from the lower plate to the upper plate. Well, in this case here, we're just going to use this force here, or the acceleration we know from before. We have the distance, and we know the acceleration up, so we could just use that to figure out what is going to be my time it takes. So, once again, we go distance is equal to 1 half at squared, because my initial velocity is going to be 0. And we end up getting 2, 0.24 seconds. Now, let's look at E. E says calculate the minimum voltage required to start the particle moving from the lower plate to the upper plate. So once again, we have to go past my gravitational field. So all I'm going to do is rearrange this here, and we're going to use for my magnetic, instead of using magnetic field, or sorry, electric field strength, we're going to be using volts divided by my distance because that is also a way of calculating electric field. And now we're going to rearrange this to isolate for my volts. Now if I isolate for my volts, I'm going to end up getting my volts is equal to my mass uh, multiplied by gravity, multiplied by my distance between plates, divided by my charge. 
And I'm going to leave that up to you guys to plug everything in and do that final calculation.